live from Quincy College in Cordage Park, Plymouth, Mass. It's Greg Simino. Thank you, thank you. It's nice to be here. Thanks to the local scene for having me. Uh, thanks for Dan in the control room. Let's get it. Uh, when I was going to college, my local Elks gave me a scholarship. Uh, 200 bucks. Yeah, I guess they didn't really think a lot of me. <laughs> yeah, they were probably like, who's this, Gerard's kid? He'll be back here calling bingo within two, two years. 200 bucks. I like to think that that's how they come up with the, the pricing, and that's how they say it. Oh, Gerard's kid? He could be president one day. President of the lodge. No. <laughs> 200 bucks. I like to think that they used the experiences that I had in the lodge in uh, coming up with my scholarship. Uh, Gerard's kid? Yeah. He was still coming to the kids' Christmas party. He was 16 years old. He sat on Santa's lap. He Santa was played by his father. He had no idea. No. 200. <laughs> 200 bucks. We tried to give him a job uh, calling the numbers at the fish fry. He couldn't do it. His brain is, uh, is all mush from all the pork sandwiches he's been eating here at the Elks. 200 bucks. And uh, two years later, I was working at Walmart. So they were kind of right. And my brother came in, and we were in the toy department. And he said, hey, can I, can I borrow your ID? I want to go visit my friends at college. And I was like, you're not going to borrow my ID. No, here, here, get this. We were in the toy department. They had these matchbox cars with uh, a race car's driver's license in there. He used that license to get into UMass for four years. And the legend of Buckshot Jones was created. Yep. 20, 30 years later now, he's married, he has kids. We still call him Buckshot. Bucky, Buck, Uncle Buck. Yep. He really made a name for himself in college. He, uh, he also has a race car driver's wife. A race car driver who never wins. No. <laughs> a race car driver who met his wife before he got famous, you know, something like that. If you want legal advice, we all go to Buck's mother-in-law for legal advice. Yeah, because she's been playing the system since 1963. She even has a t-shirt that says that right on there. So I asked her one day, do you think Buck will get in trouble for going to college and using that uh, fake ID the whole time. And she's like, <laughs> no, silly. He can't. Those records are sealed. <laughs> That's how she gives law, law advice, you know? She's kind of like an ex-smoker and a pirate mixed into one. She's a lot of fun. <laughs> um, my cousins, uh, we have one cousin. He's one credit short of finishing college. And he probably won't go back and get that credit. We also have another cousin who is a couple cards short of playing with a full deck. And he's probably not going to find those cards either. So we got some smart, some dumb. It's a good mix. No. <laughs> I remember um, taking psychology, sociology in, in college. And I thought, wow, these are really interesting. They really play with your mind. I can see how people get tricked into picking this as their major. I, um, I took an at-home course when I was in college. And you go there, pick up the video cassette, bring it home, watch it, turn in the work. And I thought, man, I can't wait till one day these come on DVD. <laughs> it's just funny. I don't know. <laughs> video cassette, DVD. Yeah. Um, and I remember turning in the work, and my professor would write, 
great job, Greg. Keep up the good work. Hope to see you in class one day. And I thought, oh, that's nice. He thinks I'm going to come to class one day. Oh, sweet. <laughs> and that's the beauty of the, uh, the at-home course. You could take all your college courses at home, never have to go to the college, meet anyone, talk to anyone, and graduate with a degree. I mean, how else do you think all these inmates are getting their degrees, right? <laughs> I, like a, I like a virtual classroom, you know? It's virtual. It's virtually, virtually impossible for them to get a hold of me. That's what I like about it. <laughs> but the, uh, the inmates getting their degrees, you know, it's like, he probably writes, great job, serial killer. Keep up the good work. Hope to see you in class someday. No. <laughs> probably that's his... Uh, what he writes to them. <clears throat> and I bet, like, uh, one time I got a, a used book from the county jail. Yeah, it was described as having little to no blood on it. <laughs> I told my professor, I don't have my book this week. It's being used as evidence in a court case. <laughs> Ironically, it's my criminal justice book. I don't have it on me. Exhibit A. I bet the, uh, the graduation parties at the, down at the jail are pretty ruckus, you know? Oh, sir, there's a graduation party down in cell block six. Shut it down. Get the fire hose. Confiscate all the jalapeno poppers. <laughs> when I had my graduation party at the Elks, uh, I cried. And uh, I told them it was because of the jalapeno poppers. But I think they knew it was a little bit of both. Just a beautiful thing. <laughs> and the, the warden would be like, it's time to order the Code Red. Code Red Mountain Dew. It's a, it tastes like Mountain Dew, but it's red. They'll love it so much they won't want to leave. Sir, uh, serial killer, he got his law degree online. How did he not get enough internet minutes to get a whole law degree? Well, he got some for good behavior, and some of the other inmates gifted him their minutes. Now he's going to represent them all in their appeals. Oh, geez. What are we going to do? Time to order the code red. <laughs> <laughs> did you order the code red? You're damn right I did. Sir, are you invoking Colonel Jessup? No, I'm evoking Colonel Ketchup. It'll go perfect with these jalapeno poppers. I always thought that Colonel Jessup's name was too close to Colonel Ketchup, you know? Did you order fries with that? You're damn right I did. <laughs> oh, gross. Did you put ketchup on your spaghetti? That's right. I like to put ketchup on things you don't like to talk about at parties. Something like that. Colonel Ketchup. Mm. You get ketchup on your white pants. <laughs> when I, uh, yeah, when I was in college, I took this library class. Yeah, this was a mistake. 8 a.m. on a Sunday morning, once a week. I should have saw it coming. What, I, didn't, I thought, think I wanted to do anything Saturday nights? So I, I go there, I show up. In the first class, the professor goes, welcome to Aviation 101. And I start laughing, right? That's funny. And everyone else looks at me, and I'm like, oh, geez. I'm in the wrong class. So I get up and start going out, and I'm like, Aviation 101? Am, am I even in the right school? They let kids fly now? <laughs> What was I in flight school? That's not where I went. They just said it was some class off the library. And then I think, you know, when the professor shows up at 8 a.m. and none of the students are there, I wonder if he goes like this. You've done it again, Professor Library. You've outsmarted those kids. I'll be taking my check now, please. No. <laughs> I don't think it's a course that even needs a professor. You know, I think the library should just run it. 
you know, it's, it should be whether or not you can take out books and return them without getting any or too many late fees. Then at the end of the semester, they say, okay, Greg, you owe 60 cents. If you pay it, you get an A, and if you don't, you get a B. And that would be fine. That would be a fun little library class. I could use that. So um, I never made it to that Sunday morning book club, so I tried a last-ditch effort to save my grade. I asked them, I asked the professor, what can I do? He's like, well, if you do the final project, you might be all right. So the final project was like, uh, look up a book or something, I don't know, something stupid, and write about it and turn it in. And I still failed. And I feel like that professor in that class were a dirty little trick. Something they don't really teach you before you go to college. So now when I'm filling out forms, you know, and it says highest level of education, I put some college. But I'm looking for that box that says went to college, got tricked. I'm looking for that box to check off. <laughs> so I didn't really, I didn't finish college, you know. But I don't finish a lot of things, you know. Thank you notes, Sudoku puzzles, crossword puzzles. Mostly because I don't know what to write. And I think if I finished college, I might have the answers. <laughs> Didn't work out. And some people, they, they might look better than me on paper, you know, with their college degree. And then some people just might flat out look better than me, you know? Sometimes you lose. That's what college taught me. And our, our little league, by not keeping score, isn't helping. Uh, because when you reach, when you're done with Little League and you reach real life, they keep score. The IRS keeps score, your boss keeps score, and your wife keeps score. And guess what? You lose. <laughs> they might tell you there are no shortcuts in life. <clears throat> uh, perseverance, hard work, that's what really pays off. And I find that to be mostly true, but... If you don't mind, I'm still going to look around for those shortcuts. Maybe uh, find a scroll or something. Because if video games have taught me anything, there are shortcuts everywhere. And a ton of missing scrolls. <laughs> but I'll, uh, I'll give stuff the old college try, you know? Hey, give it the old college try. I'll pay for something, go for a few times, get bored and quit. Hey, the old college try. That's how I do it. <laughs> That's how I do it right there. People who know me. I went to college and I was trying to figure out the, the names of some of the places that you go to. And we had this games room, but it said rumpus room on it. And I was like, oh, rumpus room. Yeah, we can uh, get a bunch of rum and look at some pus in that room. That's what we can do. In there. <laughs> or, or maybe it's a different break. Maybe it's... Rump us. We'll get a rump roast. We'll cook it all up and for all of us. Rump us room. No matter what we did, though, that room always smelled of haggis. So that was one, <laughs> that was one downfall. <laughs> so when uh, classes opened up, I went there and um, it was a long line of people. And I got up to the, finally got up there and handed it to my, these are the classes I want. And the lady said, sorry, Greg. These are all full. And I was like, great. Guess I'm not going to med school. <laughs> She's like, Greg, well, you know, if there any opens up, if any seats open up, we'll, we'll let you know. And I was like, what is this, a Taylor Swift concert? <laughs> Do you have any meet and greets left? All the VIP packages are sold out? What about, is it going to just show up on Disney Plus in a couple months? Can I take the course like that? Is that going to be a possibility? I'll just wait for that. I was able to find a, a t-shirt for the class in the parking lot. It was an unauthorized version, so I don't know whether I can trust the syllabus that's on the back of it. I don't know. It was unauthorized. I've never seen a college... Professor, professor with his own merch table. 
There was, it was more crowded than the bookstore in this guy. I did see that the, the professor was having a, a textbook signing, so I went to that. But all I got was an autograph and a photo with the professor. Yeah, I didn't want to be like everyone else. Are there any more seats going to open up? Every person in line, are there any more seats going to open up? Do you mind? Come on, people. He's a person, too. Leave him alone. It's not that important. I'm going to the water a lot. I went to the, this place called the Bursar's Office. And I was like, Bursar. That's like they took the words burglar and purse and put them together. Because that's what they do there. <laughs> they steal your money at the Bursar's Office. See? That Latin's paying off. Am I right? So I went there and I said, <clears throat> <laughs> Yeah, what do I owe you? Let's settle up here. And we did, and, and I said, uh, well, how much is it uh, if you just, how much is it for you to just call my parents and tell them I'm doing good at college? And tell them like this, he's a good school boy. <laughs> that's how I want you to do it. If I'm paying all this money, that's how I want it to come out. And uh, then I said, well, how much is it, let's go over some other stuff here because there's no classes I want to take. How much is it to be a non-student, you know? How much is it to be a NPC, non-playable character at this video game of college you're selling me? How much is that? Because I can do that. Just walk around the campus like, hmm. Campus shuttle's out again today. <laughs> Professor so-and-so's out sick again today. There's a special in the cafeteria today, jalapeno poppers. And then if uh, anyone comes up to me, I'll hand them a flyer. And then that'll be like their quest completed. I got a college flyer. Yes. <laughs> I found a scroll. Then they'll look at it and it'll just say, slam poetry at the Rathskeller. Yeah, yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> But I did, I, I did go to orientation. That was fun. There was loud music. The team mascot was there. They had pizza. I was like, this is Chuck E. Cheese for adults. <laughs> and the classes are like the games, except they take thousands of tokens. And if you save up enough tickets or Credits, as they like to call them, you can turn them in for an associate's degree. <laughs> but uh, as you know, I, I wasn't that good. I turned in all my tickets for uh, the uh, college sweatshirt. Got to have that, right? And then I had a little leftover. I got a, a spider ring and some bubble gum. <laughs> and that's what I went home with. I didn't go to the... Um, the, uh, I always wanted to go to the basketball game at college. You know, I was like, oh, geez, that would be real fun. I could be like, oh, hey, I have science class with that point guard over there. Man, he is not this good at science. <laughs> I guess I should probably keep doing his homework for him. For the team, you know, for the team. And I should probably keep taking those exams for him, too, you know. That'll be also for the team. And, you know, maybe I should take a second look at that NL NIL license he signed. Maybe there's some money in there for me. <laughs> right? That's the big thing. <laughs> Did you ever have this? Did you ever have come home from college, you know, and the, the family party there, and there's that one family friend who wants to talk to you about college, and you're 18, and you're like, dang. And they're asking you questions like, do they still drink in the woods uh, up on the hill behind so-and-so hall there. And you're like, ah, you're 18. You're like racking your brain like, ah, what is that? On the right side of campus, the left side? I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I can't, I can't answer these questions for you. I'm 47 now, and I can't navigate myself out of that conversation at 47, let alone 18. But um, yeah, I'm 18. Of course I drink in the woods. But I'm not letting you have that juice. 
You're not getting any of that. Are you kidding me? At a family party? <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, guys. But I think, I think now I am 47. Maybe I can come up with what do you wanted to hear, you know? I don't know those places you talk about, and maybe you should reminisce with your college friends, but here, here's maybe what he wanted to hear. Uh, yes. Oh, we do. We do go to that place behind that so, that hall. Yes, I'm so glad you got you started that tradition with your friends so long ago, and now I can keep it up. Yes, and I feel like if I keep going there, I'll meet my wife there, you know, and we'll have we'll have beautiful kids, and they'll come to this college too. Three generations of people coming to this college, and then my kids, they'll win gold at the Olympics, and that'll be great. We'll win gold. And then the five of us will all come back to the college on Friends and Family Day, you know, and your legend will be inscribed in the Great Hall, me, my wife, and two kids, and they'll hold up their gold medals in front of the whole college. And everyone will clap. And then the college will say... <laughs> then the college will say, quest completed, yes. Friend and family conversation complete. Final <laughs> boss unlocked. Something like that. I'm glad I could do that. <laughs> Let's talk about uh, familiar faces when you get to college, you know? Yeah, they follow you everywhere, don't they? Yeah, people that had the same idea as like, going to college close to home like you did, you know? It's just convenient. And you see them and you're like, oh, hey, great. Familiar faces from high school. It's like, dang, I had to burn through some of my college stranger pool on you. It's a small percentage, it's okay. Great, now there's people here that know how awkward I can be. I was hoping, <laughs> I was hoping for all these strangers to find out on their own, you know? Thank you, thank you. Familiar faces. We, uh, we were in high school together. We were in middle school. We weren't friends in high school or middle school. Uh, in elementary school, we weren't friends, but I think we did have that one moment. I think we did. And then, uh, let's see, kindergarten, we weren't friends. Nursery school, we weren't friends. And I remember being a baby in the hospital, being the, the same baby unit with you. You reached over one time, and I was like, eh, nah, nah. <laughs> still didn't like you, even as a baby. <laughs> We, we crossed a lot of bridges in high school. We burned a lot of bridges, too. But the bridge from me to you, it's uh, still in the planning board stages, so let's just leave it at that. <laughs> then you, uh, you live a long life, you know. You, you do your thing. You get up to heaven, and who do you see? Familiar faces again. Dang. Hi, how you doing? Good to see you again. You find yourself going up to God and saying, God, uh, what's the deal with hell again? Anything? Any chance? What's the deal about that? Can you talk about that? And God's like, sorry, Greg. Uh, hell is all full. But if a seat opens up, we'll give you a call. <laughs> great, great. Final boss unlocked. <laughs> <laughs> Then you get to hell, and the devil is like, okay, okay, Greg. He's maybe a little meaner. Okay, Greg. I don't know, I don't know. Fireball. <laughs> uh, and he's like, okay. You come up with an impossible riddle, and I'll let you go back to heaven. And I think about it, and I go, okay. Sunday morning, 8 a.m. library class. <laughs> impassable. And the devil goes, damn it, dang it, yeah, you got it. Final boss defeated, you win. <laughs> You're back in heaven. <laughs> Thank you, Plymouth. It's been real fun. Catch me in the upcoming movie, Death Campus. It's death o'clock. Do you know where your students are? <laughs> Thank you.
serial killer played by Kingston's own Chris Cooper. No, no, no. <laughs> Professor Library played by Christopher Walken. Uh, <laughs> Colonel Ketchup played by Jack Nicholson. And The Devil played by Willem Dafoe. <laughs> so there you go, that's the lineup. <laughs> Classes are open now. Do you have enough tokens? <laughs> it's Death Campus. Coming to you theaters, May 4th. Look for it. Thank you.